So in for repair today, we have our John Deere 7810. Yeah, we seem to have a little bit of a coolant leak on that. We also have a case common which has a blunt knife in it. John B is trying to figure that one out. And we'll catch up with David and Marco as they go about their daily duty. We also have a shout out here for the Tony Cassidy Memorial Vehicle Run, which uh, is part of the Noble Vintage Club. It takes place on Sunday the 29th of September. So yeah, it's all, it's for now our cancer support. So, all proceeds go to Nava uh, CFR and Nava Cancer Support. So get down to that and support that a good worthy cause. So hopefully you might see somebody there on the tour to there. We're actually going down to the plough and there. We're going to have a look at some of the different ploughs, what's going on. So yeah, give us a shout there. If you do spot us there, come over and say hello. We'd be delighted to see us. So first of all, we'll head over to David. Bit of a job on this morning, first thing. Um, yeah, a bit of repair to do on the trail harvest, on the Grimby trail harvest or so. I've asked the guys maybe, he's my tip out there. Yes. It's a little bit away. Uh, again, what do you yeah. bring with you, David? That's, well, that's the problem, the isn't it? That's the thing, you see, do you lug over the work trailer and then for the jobs we're going over and doing, we're just going to load up the Jeep. And yeah, so yeah you don't need, actually need a lot of power as such. It's no, just we shouldn't need tools. It. It's tools. There's so tools Mark was in here. I don't know Mark or your muscle. I'm bringing muscle. the muscle with me. So yeah, yeah. so the two buddies going over are Marco <laughs> and Dave. Uh, I think Dave, Mark was for the... Like manager. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> pointing it. Yeah. Pointing it. Yeah. David, <laughs> David, David does the work. I just give the orders. No. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah so look, we, we need a selection of bolts for start. A mm -hmm. uh, few jobs to bring on that. And then we need probably your prior bars and things like that because we yeah, have we've pry bars, we've shafts, uh, we've a shaft to take out, and we've we've a segment to replace in one of those sockets, spanners, impact sockets, impact gun, grinder, yeah. grinding this, cutting this, flap wheels, so batteries, it, it might be chargers. Easy, might be easier to bring the have so we've the Hilux loaded up and that's it. But you look at what do you do? You kind of have to bring everything with you. You, know, you might only use a handful of them, but yeah, well, at least you have them with you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, well, well, well the things nowadays, everything is a lot of stuff is cordless anyway, so yeah. it ain't that so bad, least, I suppose. At least we can bring them with us. Yeah, yeah. 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 So we don't need things, need diesel and stuff, so we don't need to bring a diesel tank right. um, this time. Uh, yeah, it's just go over and go through the machine and just make sure it's ready for digging Friday. Okay, that's it. Right. We'll let you just walk away that. Just on the way out the door now, I also see a skid here, David, mm. that's uh, miraculously just arrived into the workshop that on a pallet. That, that combine was perfect going out this season. Okay. The batter's beat gets on it for a couple of weeks, look at the stain. So, so this is a skid off the, um, I presume it's the Sensen plant. Is it the Sensen it's a, it's skid a, on it? It's the Sensen skid on it, Jay, yeah, in fairness. So the, the two of them either side and just literally wore tin. So I'd say, look, it, it, it didn't break through before this season. But it, after this season, it's broken through now. It's done a good bit of cutting. Yeah. What has it done? 15, 1600? Yeah, well, yeah, it wouldn't have done it all, all, but yeah. that's what's cut. So, um, yeah, so between the rape and the wheat and the, and the barley. So, um, the procedure there would be just to resheat it, would it? That's it, resheat it. That's it, yeah, just put, just put a plate on it. So, it'll be thick enough here, and here, it's just where the, this, this, the impact, point, the impact on point is right. That's where it is. So, we just need to, it looks like it was actually welded there before, maybe. So we just need to put a sheet across that. We'll probably put a sheet of 5mm and be done with it. It'll probably see it out. Yeah. And that's it. If we go heavy enough with it, that'll be job done. That's it. So we do that both sides. I think there's a couple of cover, uh, the skid plates on the side of it need adjustment too. They do, yeah. A, yeah, there's a couple of them bent. And uh, I see yeah. he's, he's less, left a long list there. Isn't he, so. He's left a long list, is right. So that skid is actually attached here. There's two hinge and bolts in the front. And this is your sensor that actually walks up and down to keep your header straight. Um, we also have two straps here and they're just to keep it from falling down onto the ground. We're actually going to walk off this sensor here all the time. So it's continuously sensing up and down and your, your, your tilt as well. Okay, Sean, you're doing a bit of washing this morning. No one else to wash. No one else to wash. You're not very happy looking there, see no, that? No, the drivers love to leave a mess for you. Yeah. You know. So really what happened was, we had a few drivers there, then they went back to college. Mm. Mm. But a lot of... Um, a lot of mess left behind them. There was, yeah. Mm. So we have to kind of clean this one up. Yeah. Now, the row of air generally wouldn't be out this time of year, except no. that John B had a job to do and a bit of waste ground and we said we'd roll away and just let it die off which yeah. has done the job. Problem was then there was full of complete crap there when we got back um, but no doubt we will clean it. Now when we have it off there I do see some of the blades Sean are well there's a couple of them well wore here on the end. Not well it? worn, not twining beside the bearing so. Yeah you're going to have to clean that out Yeah. and we have a few 
blade in there broke, completely actually. broke, I think. So mm. I don't know what you mean. He must have been burying it. Burying it there. Chopping stones or something, stones, was it? Stones, yeah. Um, it's been in the quarry. So what else do you have this to do? And I see you had two cultivators there. You had the horse one on the roller done. One roller done and one to do. Go, so. Yeah. So we didn't nominate anyone else to do a bit of washing here, did we? Did we? Has to be done. Yeah, look, Job at the end of the you day. want to do it right, you have to do it yourself, yeah. Sean. It's not yeah. here. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, well, look. Head now does a really oh, yeah, what? Yeah, just show us that. I hear the noise of it there on it. We use on rollers or even the rover blades because you can soak it and knock off all the clay you want. It's still going to torture yeah. just trying to get in a waste of water as well. So, yeah. yeah. Sitting out. But with this, it just gives a, a, kind oh, of a spinning effect, does it? It tears it off. Rips tears it off, right. But don't use it on paint? No, take it off. So it's mostly on bare metal or anything there that we're going Blades or rollers or anything like that, just, you know, yeah. stuff that's in the ground, even a plow or anything like that, just use it. Yeah, true, yeah. No, I did hear the knives looking around there, I so said, uh, Sean must have found the turbo head around here. That hidden in the box from now so, on. Yeah, hide that away, that's yeah. none the rest of them. Huh? Yeah. Make sure John B doesn't mush the cow with it anyway, <laughs> with the Jeep. The fair stripes left out That's if you wash them. Huh? That's if you wash them. Oh, no, he has a fairly clean now, in fairness. Yeah, we'll keep that clean. <laughs> right. 7, 8, 10 auto power in with a little bit of a, I suppose a little bit of a rattle there. Isn't rattle it? from the engine, yeah. Well, what's uh, that? To me, it sounds like, like diesel now. Injector, you know, either injector leaking or, over, or advancing slightly, or overfueling it could be too. So we've taken the side cover off here. First thing that's fairly obvious is uh, manifold. Two sheared bolts. bolts on the manifold. So the rest you can't see, but I'm not seeing any black, so. <laughs> that's, going to, that's going to be fun. Yeah. You'd love that job, Mick, wouldn't huh? you? You'd Nobody love that job. 4, 10. It was a day and a half at it. Yeah. One Absolute bolt. Absolute torturous bolt trying bolt. to get it out. Yeah, and I heated the course, which hardened to be jay and that killed me all here. Right, right OK. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, first of all, you check the turbo on it. Yeah, no play. The other thing I was checking for was um, these have a water-cooled intercooler. And if we've had it before where you get antifreeze leaking internally and going into the in a manifold, but it's easy enough to check. Take off the pipe and see if there's any um, pink yeah. antifreeze, which we haven't. No. So that's good. Yep. Uh, no, you were on to Johnny below. And I was, yeah. And he was saying the oh, was he fuel towards? rail pressure sensor, check the pins on that, which is on the bottom of the fuel rail on the far side. And there's two other pins, a TFI or something, I can't remember what he called it. Check both of them, tighten the pins. But we're still in the same boat, I think. But now we have a warning light on the dash. We need to investigate that. Yeah. So I need to go up into the codes and see what's, what's like yep. on the <clears throat> diagnostics. Yep. Go up and do that? Yep. I'll ring Johnny and just see what it is first. Yeah, yeah. It, should we be looking for a code around, Johnny? What more can we do, really? When you hammer the throttle, it's rattling. It's like pre, like pre injection or over advanced or something. Yeah, well, like, even like a manifold gas is going. This yeah, is but like which we have a new one. Which we have one, one already. Right, but the Neo one is gone, and that we have one yeah, gone. gone. Yeah, bolt's gone. It's not gonna no. No, there is more of an injector rattle to me, Johnny. You know, like pre injection or something like that, or over fueling or something. Which one do we go into on on uh, engine calls with the dash light on? ECU, is it? For engine? ECU, yeah. ECU, we're getting a couple of calls there. What are you getting? One. No, we'll go back to the beginning. You need to clear them out of it. Right, and start again. How do we clear them? If you flick through them all then at the end it'll say end. Right. And hit your hit your hazard, is it? Hazard's then, yeah, and it's your That's point it. of view then. We flash it out. It's not showing any codes. No, ah, no, it's just not going up. It's not going up through the through them there, Johnny. That's all. Oh, jeez, because we've got the players now. That's a special. I know, but I can't get the. Hold on, hold on. I can't be on ricks. I can't get the fuse out. Right, I'm gonna get you, Gripper. Right, and then. <coughs> bye bye. Album, mate. Album again. again. <coughs> so diagnostics. ECU and I flash it Johnny, don't I? Yeah, but it shouldn't come up. It's yeah, not come. It yeah, it's not. It's not doing that now. Stopping. Uh, like stopping the park, Leon. Like, that shouldn't be on.
flash them there. <clears throat> no, the headlights are not flashing. Flash it! Huh? Oh. Oh yeah, yeah, and then something happened there. Uh. Where are the numbers going up and down on both? Yeah. Let's see. No, I don't go through the calls there. When you put the indicator on, the other way it's going through the codes itself, then it should go to the end, shouldn't it? Yeah. No? yeah. If, you, if you turn the indicator on and off real quick, it'll go one at a time. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, that's what I Six, six. On zero one, there's six six and one seven eight, one three three in the second. So I let and right, yeah, so just hit the. That's it. Try right now. Yeah, yeah we've done that. Do uh, that. Right, that's all. So there's no colds now, honey. Right. So, so what? One to two. You start it now. If you even if you take, take the fuse back, out, switch it off, take the fuse out. Start it. Rev it a couple of times, and then go back in and check the code. See what the back end is. Right. Okay. Six. ECU is in the house. Yep. So, on the first one we have... Nothing. Nothing. Excuse me, that sounds to me like a manifold. It is there now, yeah, but see the pipe off, and the, the inner manifold pipe off, and I need to get that back on to see if that could, there could be a pop coming through there. Yeah, to me it looks like a man. You have no codes there anyway. No codes, Johnny, sorry. Yeah, but to pull, pull back together and see what's in. The manifold will give you a crack in that Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, help. Right, okay. Thanks, Sean. Right, right, right. <coughs> so we just leave me hands on me. So we just <laughs> had a quick word with, uh, with Johnny there from Mead Farm. Uh, wealth of knowledge. Just to see if there's anything maybe on the codes here that are missing. So we can check it for um, the codes there on the diagnostics. Now it's a matter of just. Taking out a fuse, fuse 18, and putting the fuse back in here. And when we put that fuse in and turn on the ignition, we should get DIA coming up Which for diagnostics. Have. We're looking at the engine management. So engine management. We just flick up on the indicator here until we get the ECU. ECU. And, and then I think we flash, flash. it. And, and that brings up all the different codes. So on now that's listening as well as zero. So now we need to go to zero one to see is there any codes there. No. Which we had initially, we cleared the codes um, by hitting the hazard button, cleared the codes, and now we have no codes coming up. So I would probably suggest make that, that manifold, manifold gasket is just throwing you a little bit there Maybe on so. the sound yep. of it. Mm -hmm. huh? yep. You think? Yep. Because we don't have any codes com coming well, up. Well, we so. know there's no fault, so you deal with it. So just take that fuse there, take it out of diagnostics, which is there. And pull it back up here. Not a great love of those fuses because you can't actually get in at them with your fingers. You need that. Yeah. So that's the way they're gone. At least them, those ones you can probe. Not like the newer ones now where you can't even probe them. You pull each fuse to check it. In fact, when you're 40 or 50 fuses, that's great fun. Uh, great fun, man. <laughs> yeah. Unless you have a warning diagram. So that's it on, on the 7, 8, 10. It's looking like a manifold. Both. Phone part. Yeah, just not going to be a simple job. Get yeah, out, but anyway, here's what it is.
Ja, oh, hej, hej, Roger, vad är det? Vill du bygga hammar där? Mm? Vill du bygga hammar? Ja, det är okej. Big job on here this morning, isn't it, John? Small bit, ja. Ja. Det tar tre av oss här för att du gör jobb där. Du gör det som jag har gjort. Ja, du gör det, John. Det är de smala hedder där, därför som vi... Maybe so, maybe you think that was it when I had a 10 for header. But when we went to 25 for it's a bit of a different. So we've taken um, the blade out of the combine and we're going to replace the sections on it. Yeah. We're going to do it slightly different this way. <coughs> well, I'm, I'm going back to the John Deere way. <gasps> one up, one down. Because it keeps the fingers clean. Okay. Your blade this way cleans the finger and then you have it on the bottom, that one on the top and that one on the bottom. So these are the sections that we've taken out. Mm -hmm. And to be you honest... See, I've that much work done though, wore away. Like, I think that's a <laughs> John, John, they're in the muck there. They must ah, well, just, uh -huh. I wouldn't mind that. See when you're uh, yeah. down for the crop, you have to. You're going down. You're, going you're getting all the crop, isn't it? Yeah, there? that's it. Yeah. So yeah, we're just going to try one up and down. Now we don't possibly have a whole lot left to cut. We just have our beans left, but the stalks can be. Yeah, they're just there. And I actually, I was looking at the beans there, and if you do that at all, it comes up out of the ground. The yeah. Bean, the whole root, like. Yeah. So you'd want them sharp enough. And then. the barley can be hard enough to cut oh, at times. Oh, jeez, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, pull. Yeah, it pulls rather than cuts. Yeah. So it's just a one up, one down. Let's see what happens. It's, yeah. Uh, we have, as John says, we had these on our John Deere combine. Uh, they were always, that's the system that they use with them. Always did, And they yeah. say that they maybe that they clear better on the... On the yeah, well, you have, uh, one, you have one knife to see at the bottom of the finger and you have this one down at the top of the finger. Yeah. You know, so you're cleaning your finger, you know. Okay, we'll leave you there. No, nah, we're not too far away now. You got a job, Roger, anyway. Okay. Yeah. Good, You're the helper on the job, are you? 100%. Good. I'm sure you might even drive it now the next time, will you? Take over. Yeah, he's coming. I'll be happy to. You'll be happy John to drive it. John is his teacher, will later. Oh, John is going to teach him. <laughs> yes. 100%. I wish you luck, John. Yeah, <laughs> we might manage him. <laughs> Quiet now, please. <laughs> Roll it. Action. <laughs> <laughs> so Mick, we have a gearbox here out of, I think it's a food mixer, but the problem that we had with it, um, the seals were gone on it. Yeah, it was leaking grease out of the oil. Yeah, so it was leaking grease <laughs> out of the back of it. Now, we initially thought possibly we replaced the seals, but when you took that off... We were dry was, inside, it's in the other end is the problem. Yeah, so we've... This so, area here. We have a sore clip that actually had... Was gone. ...failed. I was gone, I think. And this is a nut that was on the back side here, threaded here for holding in the shaft. Well, now, it wasn't threaded. I've never seen anything just get quite as bad as that. You see that? They're completely gone. It's actually worn away there. Yeah, so what happened was the nut had come off and the nut was actually sitting in this groove. Now that was uh, a full shaft at one stage and it just wore it down. It just sat on the end of it there and went round it, kept going round and round it like that and wore mm. it right down nearly away on one side. I think the biggest cause of the problem though was that circle clip going. That allowed that shaft to drift back this yeah. way. Now, then when we had that oh. seals out, we had a look at our bearings. And we said, oh. And we said, oh, now this is not good either. So this maybe have caused a little bit of a vibration yeah. in the shaft. Which, which wouldn't help the seals. Which, which wouldn't help the seals, possibly leading to the nut. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I think what happened was when the circle circle let go, the shaft came back far enough that it came off the seals. Okay. That's what I'm guessing. But so we don't know. We don't know. We'll find out. We'll put it back together. So when we took the bearing out here, just to show you is how rough a bearing can be, it's... You now we have greased the hub to see would it move. And it's extremely rough, isn't it, Mick? Yeah, but you look at there. But, look, but then look when you see here, the shell that. of it... It's completely skinned off so the chrome. What's the chrome? Yeah, so when, it, when that would be like that, the pressure would be... That's a fair lump of a gearbox. Yeah, big gearbox on it. So we installed a new bearing. We put in our seeds. We've ordered up a new nut. brand new nut. Hopefully it fits now, Mick. I had it on there a minute ago, it does. Oh, had you? It won't now because you're looking at me with the camera. <laughs> well, make pressure, no pressure. Don't it's do pressure. It's a fine thread. I think it's a 1.5. It's a 40 yeah. mil by 1.5 thread. Yeah. Well, that's the one I, That's the one you told me to order on here, so. I, mean, I, I had it on it for right. 10 minutes ago. I didn't see you had on it. I forgot it. to put the locking tab on, so I'll take it off again. <laughs> So that's all that's holding that in. It shouldn't be that much pressure on it when it's together anyway. No, I wouldn't think so. Uh, and this is the special tool? Yeah, which is not it's too big. I'll have to get a smaller one. 
Yeah, mm. so these are the tools that we C, gave C you. C-spanner, we call C-spanner, yeah. yeah. Uh, What's going on? on? Because I gave them threads a good rub earlier on with thread foil, but I'm surprised, considering the state of that thing, how that shaft is not chewed. Yeah, but maybe make that just come off. And, and sat here sitting, somewhere, sitting, yeah. You can see where it was sitting here, wasn't it? Actually, there was That's no... probably where wore that. Well, that's exactly where wore it. It's the exact <laughs> width of it, should I? See yep. it? It just sat like that, on it? And there's the oak, the bar coming up against that. Yeah, the bar, that yeah which means that it couldn't, it couldn't come yeah. off. Right. <clears throat> right, fun and games. We have a water leak here. We have a pool. Yeah. Uh, I was just saying, oh, F, you, you know yourself. I do. Because yeah. I thought it was coming down from up inside, but the lads had copped it here. <coughs> Which is unusual, I've no, yeah. never, never seen this happen before. Well, well split that there. was the first time. And I reckon that's probably from the hedge car behind. There's a hedge car on this side, yeah? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, we do see where it's just caught it with a little <coughs> plastic <coughs> in the Keha pipe. And it's just put a little nick in it there. So we have a spare pipe. Uh, Mick has pulled one out of the storage. It's a bit firmer. Yeah. But I can put a bit of heat in it. With hot air going. That should. Well, that's often enough. Just, it makes it easier to get on. You just want because, to be careful yes. here on these. That's yeah. the biggest fear now. Uh, them. Yeah, because they're going to be brittle. Over time, obviously, they're going to get hard. Uh, and as you take these off, mm -hmm. hopefully they will come off without breaking. Again, a uh, quick suggestion there, if anyone has for the bonnets there on the tractors, now, this tractor doesn't always be in the hedge car, but it probably has been in it this last week. And you can see it's starting. Getting battered. Getting battered here, so we want to kind of avoid all that. I do see maybe there's Perspex some. Perspex one, I've seen that. Yeah, Perspex one, or some actually have a cover that sits just yeah. down across it, like a mat. I yeah. uh, don't know how what it's like now when it gets wet it and air. temperature and air, air control or flow as well on that. But for the minute here, we'll get the bodies going. Um, so, Mick, what have you got there to. I have a hose and I have these clips. <coughs> Handy kit. Yeah. That one has a side cutter on it. I don't know a cutter or a... I want to measure the length of that first. Yeah. And then... So just, these are so, just so tidy, aren't they really? They're very neat. There are no sharp edges really with them. Yeah. Rather than jubilee clips. Now we, have... we, we would probably have moved on from the jubilee clips from them a good bit onto these, haven't we? Because yes. when, you're, when you're at pipes or in around, you'd actually get reefed. Skin in your arms. Yeah. With the edges of jubilee clips. Don't and will you get a good enough compression on them? Well, that's saying 7 to 9 on that one. And that's reading 7.5, so. But there should be no pressure on that. No, it's on your side gauge, really. Oh, uh, an overflow. Overflow, Expansion yeah. bottle. It's, it's um, atmospheric pressure. And we do have another expansion tank on top, don't you? On this, he on I seven, call that a head. header tank. I call that an expansion tank. Everyone will vary a bit on that. Yeah. That one should be full all the time, and the oven, when she heats up and expands into this, will rise this, and then when she cools down, it'll yeah, drop so we down. have two levels on it here. Yeah, that's, this hot. that's hot and that's cold, isn't oh, it? Yeah. Mike's yeah. levels. You can see the temperature, something there. It's going to be faded on it. There's no temperature there, and that's room temperature. Yeah. <coughs> right. So we're going to try to snip that off first. Yeah. Get a length. We'll leave a little bit longer and cut again. Uh -huh. I'll leave a little bit longer and cut again if I have to. <coughs> yeah, you have plenty of length in it there anyway. Yeah, I'll take a bit off it. Biggest problem with this sort of hose is getting stuff that's flexible enough. Right. That be good there. That's a straighten up in time. Yeah, that looks, that, looks, that looks good. Pretty good. <clears throat> now, see if we can cut. This is an old pinchers, they used to be called, I have. And I have a, you know what it used to be many, tapering? How many years have you got this, Mick? Well, I asked this question again. Long time. I don't know as long as I huh? can remember. But It'll be older than me. I have that ground flush, so I can get in very tight. Yeah. Grind, grind the back on that. I take little bits of it, rather than the whole lot. That's not coming. <coughs> you try it there, Pop? Yeah. <coughs> Bit of muscle required. Don't break the fitting. I don't see where to pull it off. I don't. Oh, see, that's a pretty, Yeah, you can if you want to. Uh -huh. I doubt it. Oh, yeah. Yep. Careful. <coughs> that's my side done, Mick. Now it's your side. I'd say they're stainless steel. Beautiful. Oh yes. 
I squeeze them on one side and, and then, then, then rotate it. There's usually enough. Huh, it's a fair grip, isn't it? Dad nearly sealed on its own. Didn't yeah. here. I'm too long. <coughs> Trying to get that to straighten out a bit. Yes. Lovely. <coughs> Coolant. So that's it for this week's workshop answer. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. And if you are going down to the player match, we will be down there tomorrow. So uh, yeah, come over there, give us a shout out there and uh, we'll have a bit of a chat with you. So from everyone here at Finnegan's Farm, we'll talk to you all next Wednesday.